Right, good afternoon grade 12. Uh, today's exercise is on page 8-9 for development of a transition. So if we go to the question quickly. Right, they say they give you the front and top view of a circle to square transition piece. And this time it's in reverse from last time. So the base is a circle and the top is a square. The scale remains the same and then all constructions must be left. Then on the diagram itself. Uh, obviously this is the front view and that is the top view which the top is below it's in first angle but it doesn't really matter so you have to redraw this diagram so the height is 35 the radius is 25 and the top or the opening is a square that's 20 by 20 All right so if we go here on the answer sheet you'll see that I've already drawn that okay um, now just like last time because we have a round base okay we actually have to work out the segments lengths that we need so for example when you see any circle you want to divide it to 12 now it's not necessarily uh, needed that you need to draw the line but as long as you mark the points on the circle all 12 of them you can have more but please don't okay 12 is the sufficient number that you're going to need and I've numbered each one. Now on the diagram, they don't actually tell us where to start. So I've decided to start here on the left side. So I'm going to cut it there. Okay, and then I'm going around clockwise. Again, if you started here or here and you went anti-clockwise round, it would have made no difference. You would have had exactly the same result as if you cut it where I have. And then the top, I've labeled A, B, C, D, E. So the starting is going to be here on A1. Right. Now the first thing that you're always going to need is the true length. Okay. So and we first need to decide how we're going to divide the top view. Okay. So we have to use triangulation because we cannot find the points directly. Okay. So what we're going to do is you see I've triangulated. So from each point I go to four points on the round base. So from B, I go to 1, 2, 3, 4. From C, I go to 4, 5, 6, 7. And then from D, I go to 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So you'll see here that I've got these purple ones and I've got the green ones. So the purple ones are all the same length, so you only need one to calculate one true length for that one. And then the green ones are similar or same length as well. Okay. And then for the base, you have to work out the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi radius or 2 pi. 25 divided by 12 to get the distance from each point or segment point on the round base. So just to clarify the formula as such, each segment is 2 pi radius divided by 12 and it gives me 13 rounded off. Okay, so you're going to set your compass to 13 whenever you work with a point on the round base. So the first true length, I'm going to go to the green one. Now again, you can take any one of these green lines in the top view or fold lines in the top view and swing them around. I've decided to go with D9. So I take D9 and I swing the base point 9 out until it's in line with D. And then I take it up and I mark it on the same base. Now you'll see here that 9 has moved from this point to that point. So that was the original point of 9. So if I go and I take this point 9 straight up to the front view this is where it is but for the true length it has moved to this side however because I did not swing D D remains exactly what it is D was the pivot point for that swing so D doesn't move so D is still here on the top and when I connect the lines I find the true length for all the green fold lines and then the next one is for the purple so I've decided to go with B1. Again, you could have taken any one and swung it out. So I took B1. I swung it out in line with B. I take it straight up. And I mark it on the base. So point 1 has moved from here to here. While B has stayed exactly where it was before. I connect it. And you'll see there's the true length for the purple fold lines. Now the third one that you need is actually the starting line. So the starting line here in A1, where it's been cut open, right? 
Now you can see I can't actually swing that one out because it's already flat and horizontal. Which means that A1 here in the front view, that's not just the point B, okay, because B is actually behind A. This is also the point for A. So this blue line, this solid line that runs to one here, that A1, is already a true length in the front view for the starting line at A1, okay? And if I cut it in a different place, so let's say I cut it here between B and C and I went to 4, or I cut it between C and D went to 7, it still would have been the true length. One of these two sides still would have been the true length for the starting line. So to start with the actual development, I'm just going to take A1, okay? So I'm talking about this A1 here, and I'm just going to put a dark line down. Again, it's non-specific. You've got quite a lot of space on your page. Um, so I would say not quite vertical or flat, somewhere in between. If you tilted this down, it still would have worked more than fine. So now the first triangle that we want to find is A1B. Okay, we already have A1. Now the top is a true shape, therefore each line here is a true length. So I'm going to put my compass on AB. I'm going to mark that down from A. And then I'm also going to take the true length of B1, which is obviously this purple line here. So I'm going to set my compass to B1 there, or the purple fold line, the true length. Okay, and we're going to mark the two. Okay, so the top bases or AB there in the top view, I put my compass down, I swing it, then I take the purple true length, I put it at the bottom point, and I swing it as well, and where the two meet, you can simply go and connect it, and that will give you the first triangle on your development. So this is the small one here at AB1. Right, so the next triangle that we want to find is just, I'm going around clockwise, so it's B12. So obviously we're going to need that distance, which we already calculated as 13. And then the green fold line, which we have here in our front view. So I'm going to set my compass to that one and to 13. And again, you're going to swing your compass on the opposite side. <coughs> so on the base, you're going to set your compass to 13. You're going to swing it. You're going to set your compass to the green true length, which is here. Put on the top point, swing it when the two meet, you're going to connect it. And that will give you the first green fold line. Now you'll see that after the first green, you have another green also swinging on B. So you can immediately go and take the same distance with your compass, swing it round further, take another 13 with your compass, mark it down. And where the two meet, you can immediately go and connect the next green fold line as well. So that's a lot quicker than doing it again. Then after that, you, we're going to go to this next purple line and then another 13 between 3 and 4. Okay, so again, we're going to take our true length of the purple, which you see in the front view. We're going to take 13. And you're going to set your compass on the purple true length. And you're going to swing it round. Swing it with a 13 for the compass from the, from the bottom base. And with the two meet, you can immediately go and connect the purple fold line. So now you can see it's actually forming. We've got one, two, three, four already done. And now we're going to go to BC4, which is the next triangle. But you can see it's repetition again. It's got another purple and then another blue base on the top. Okay, so you're going to swing it again. I'm going to set my compass to BC, I'm going to put it on the top point and I'm going to swing it. And I'm going to put my compass to the true length for the purple fold line. I'm going to swing it from the bottom and I'm going to swing it where the two meet. I've got my connection point and then I'm simply going to connect the two. So the top base is already drawn as dark and then the fold line is in between. Right, now that we have that you can see that from the beginning, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, the first triangles. After that, it's just the same repetition that we had from before. So this one is the same as this one. This one is the same as this one. So we're going to go two greens, two purple, two greens, two purple, two greens, two purple, until we're done. Okay. So it's just going to be a repetition on what we've already done. You can, in fact, you can take the distances from here and just copy it over as you go along. 
but just be careful that you don't make a mistake here because if you do make a mistake you're going to carry that through so every once in a while you do need to spot check by going back to the original true length and just checking that it's the right length okay but effectively you are just going to repeat what you've already done okay so after you've gotten to this point here you're just going to go green purple green purple green purple okay and then we're going to end off with the same half triangle that we have here you're just going to have on the end as well to finish and you'll note that as i was plotting the points i didn't draw the base because i know that the base is a circular or curved okay and that you're simply going to connect with a french curve when you're done and there is our development all done